Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a discussion about drip feeding. Not necessarily only in GTA Online, because, well, I guess at this point, complaining about GTA Online is about the most dumbest thing you can do right now, because guess what? The game is about to end its main life cycle, I suppose, and it's more than likely going to take a bit of a backbone for the next few months when it comes to Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm saying that as well because Rockstar has announced today on Twitter, which they typically don't do, that tomorrow is going to be the release of the Terabyte and also the Oppressor Mark II. So what it looks to me like is that they're trying to focus more and more on the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, which I mean, obviously I don't really mind, but that brings me and a lot of other people the same question too, is that what exactly are they going to do with its online component? Because we know that single players can be fine, we've seen a gameplay video, it looks absolutely fantastic, let you probably have seen at least that's my opinion but online is something that obviously a lot of people are very concerned about mainly because of the way gta online has been handled by rockstar themselves one of the main thing that obviously a lot of people might be thinking about is like what about the drift feeding myself included now personally i think that drift feeding is unfortunately going to be a thing within the game but what i'm personally really hoping as well is that they will take a very different approach to drift feeding and actually learn from what they've done in gta online Personally, I'm quite all right when it comes to drifting. Drifting to me is a way to get more content out from the same DLC and not dump everything in one go. However, like I mentioned before during the After Hours release week, I wasn't too happy with the way that they handled After Hours DLC, as well as the majority of content in Drift Feed, I suppose, because essentially what we got in After Hours when it comes to actual gameplay, it wasn't really a lot that we actually got. Now, obviously, tomorrow that's going to change with the release of the Terabyte, because there's a bunch of missions in that thing. Uh, so hopefully uh, that's going to, I guess, quote unquote, redeem the DLC a little bit, but uh, we'll find out tomorrow. What I personally want to do as well in this video is kind of look back at GTA Online and its release. At first, of course, GTA Online was released two weeks after... Um, three weeks after GTA 5 was released and had its single player came out. This allowed a lot of people to have enough time to play this through the single player experience that and then hint add into multiplayer if they would want to. In a way, you could kind of see this is Drift Feed as well. So what I personally wouldn't mind is that they would take the same approach like they did with GTA Online, where they released Red Dead Redemption 2's multiplayer two weeks after the release of the actual game. This way, the game that they've been working on for about eight years is not going to go to waste in the world they have built, and a single-player experience that they're also known for will just uh, get the required attention that it deserves. After those two weeks having uh, Red Dead Redemption 2's multiplayer come out, I don't think that it would be a bad idea to uh, have, you know, like they did with GTA Online, have, for example, the content creator being released at a later point as well. Stuff like that, that doesn't necessarily impact the main core gameplay of the game and what they had envisioned and have shown, like in trailers, for example, because, I mean, there's undoubtedly going to be a gameplay video for Online as well. But I really hope that at its core and going into DLCs as, and stuff as well for Red Dead Redemption 2, that they're really going to make sure that if they release a DLC, the Drift content is not going to have a major impact of what the DLC should have been, like with After Hours. And I guess in a way, After Hours kind of made me scared of how Rockstar is going to handle things. If they're going to Drift Feed, Game modes, I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. You know, they've been doing that with adversary modes. Game modes are not really that big of a deal. However, if they're going to start doing major things like, you know, a lot of missions and a lot, generally a lot of stuff that people would want to play and are excited for to play a DLC, for example, that's just kind of where I personally draw the line. I can get behind, you know, drift feeding cars or drift feeding like a mission or two or, you know, a set of, I guess, relatively okay missions. But as long as the base DLC is is fine and is substantial enough to last at least a week or at least a few days and not where you played it for a day or a few hours and think, uh, what else is there? And I really hope that Red Dead is going to take the right approach with it when it comes to drift feeding and stuff like that because it works as a business model so you can be damn sure that it's going to be your thing in Red Dead Online as well. Now obviously I'd love to know what you guys think as well. Personally I'm very much on the side of like it's okay 
if done right, but I'm pretty sure that there's a few of you who are completely against it and would rather have all the DLC on day one so they can be done with the entire DLC in about five hours. So as always, of course, I'd love to know what you think and down in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later.